Well, welcome back. I'm George, your humble servant. And to all of you distillers, brewers, a hobbyist, or those who are just curious about this craft, we are welcome. And we invite you to subscribe. Please do so. It doesn't hurt. And hey, when the bell shows up, if you click the bell, uh, you'll get a notification every time that we publish a new video. So you can stay in tune with what's going on. Now, on to the things that we're here for today. Corn. Let's talk about the magic of corn. Um, and this is a really, really wide, broad topic. Um, and I get questions about this all the time. I've had these discussions, and I thought it was a good time to just, let's just settle it. Now, this is a really, really large topic, but what we're going to do is we're going to condense it down so that we can all absorb this and make some really good decisions in the future. How's that? Now, I get the question all the time about crack corn. So I went out and got a 50-pound bag of crack corn. Yep, it cost me about 14 bucks at my local tractor supply. Uh, some people claim it's only 9 bucks. I guess I got ripped off. Well, it, in any event, uh, it is relatively cheap. And uh, you can also tell by just looking at it that it, it's relatively cheap. It's, uh, it's a feed grade type of corn. Because you know corn comes in different grades. Uh, this is not really fit for human consumption, but will it work? Absolutely. Uh, and I encourage you to give it a try. Um, now, I've read a lot of blogs and I've done a lot of research before. In the past, I've done this before. Um, my overall starting gravity seems, tends to start off about 10 to 15 points lower uh, than using a quality product, uh, for lack of better words. But uh, it's readily available, but uh, the way I overcome that is the way that I actually mash. And we're going to discuss that in detail as well. But before we go any further, let's go through exactly what cracked corn looks like, what it is, and in comparison to flake corn. You with me so far? Now, and I know my, no, not you, the guy back there sleeping already, who at the end of this video is going to call me and ask me what flake corn looks like. Hey, wake up. You're getting ready to miss it. Look, this is an example. Here we have the cracked corn. And you'll see cracked corn comes in, oh, a bunch of different varieties of sizes and uh, texture. Um, some of those are full kernels. Some of those are half kernels. Uh, there's even a, oh gosh, there's even a couple of pebbles in there. But that's just a feed corn, not to be confused with flake corn. Now, you'll notice the flake corn, the color is even different. Um, this, is a, this is a higher quality product as opposed to this. You see them side by side. Now, for our purposes, uh, cracked corn will work, but I actually ground it down um, just to make sure that it wasn't sitting there because, it, look, let's be honest. If you've ever had a meal with corn, you normally get an opportunity to see that corn again the next day, if you understand what I'm talking about. Corn is really, really difficult to digest, especially a whole kernel. So it gets into your stomach, and you know your stomach will digest, and the acids in your stomach will break down darn near anything, but it won't break down a corn kernel. So you got to get at it. So for those, and I've had the calls, I got me a bag of corn, and I just poured it in there, and George, it's not working. Well, my God, all you've got is corn sitting in water. You've, you've got to get at the inside of that kernel in order for anything to even start to happen, to remotely start to happen. Uh, so make sure you crush that stuff down. And even when it comes to cracked corn, you might want to, if you're looking for a high efficiency out of it, the most that you could possibly get, uh, it, it would do you good to just run it through a mill one more time. Uh, but totally up to you. Will it work like this? Absolutely. Will it work better like this? Absolutely. Will it work best if you use this? Absolutely. Now there are some differences. Now, of course, Remember, flake corn's been pre-gelatinized. That means it's been steamrolled, so the proteins are removed, the, um, the germ oils have been removed out of it. So you don't have those kind of byproducts, and it's already prepared 
All you've got to do is get the enzymes in there to convert those massive starches, which this is now loaded with, uh, convert those to fermentable sugars. Uh, same thing goes for these, with the exception of, since they're not pre-gelatinized, uh, the process is a little bit longer. Follow me closely now. We're going to go, if I used flake corn, and I put that in a pot of water, and I bring that temperature up to, oh, I usually bring it up to about 180 degrees, 175 degrees, just to get it, we call it hydrolyzed, okay? Look, I want to get it wet. I want all those starches to absorb as much water as possible, and it turns into a real thick porridge. Now, you cool that down to 155 degrees, and that's when you introduce your amylase. Uh, if you're not introducing amylase separate, then you can use a six-row or a two-row barley or any kind of a malted grain that has a high diastatic power. Those two just happen to have the highest. So it, for, oh gosh, for a 10 pound batch of flake corn, <coughs> you can convert all that flake corn and the barley if you use ooh, about two pounds of barley. There's that much amylase in two pounds of barley, it will convert all of that. Uh, if it makes you happy, throw three pounds in. The only thing, the only result is, is oh, your gravity points may bump up just a little bit. All right, now on the other hand, if we're going to use cracked corn, straight like this, or we've already, and we're going to use, as an example, these two are exactly the same, just this one's been ground a little bit more. Now, we've got some challenges. Um, and the first challenge is, is we're going to use a term, again, we borrow from brewing, is doughing in. Uh, and you dough in at 104 degrees. And all that really does is just kind of try to get everything nice and soaked up and get it equally distributed within your kettle. Now you hold it there for about oh, 20 minutes or so at 104 degrees. To make sure you've got it all. Now we've got to go through the next phase. And the next phase is called the protein rest. And see, that's not necessary with flake corn. It's already been done. So we go through the protein rest. So we've got to release those proteins and they'll start, that, those in the oils will start to float at the top. You'll notice them. Um, now you hold it at 130 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. And that allows that to happen, to take place. Plus, it doesn't do anything else to the corn. So all it's doing is preparing your corn for the next phase. So make sure you stop at that protein rest and give that an opportunity to separate those proteins and those germ oils. Uh, now, a lot of other things take place in there. Like I said, we're going to condense this down to a small bite. Now, the last but not least, we call the sacrification rest. Sacrification is just making it sweet. Hmm. Same thing with flake corn. 155 degrees, and then you introduce your barley, your malted barley, or you just introduce amylase itself, um, and then allow that to rest for 60 to 90 minutes. It's as simple as that. Then you've converted all the starches to fermentable sugars. Now the challenges are, uh, this is an excellent, okay, let's talk about this. What are the two basically designed for? No, number one is human consumption. Number two is animal consumption. But it's not gonna hurt you. Uh, it's a very good product and can be efficient if you're trying to make a massive batch for fuel. And that's because of the cost. The cost associated with it, I mean, gosh, it cracked corners about what, five cents, uh, 10 cents a pound? And uh, flake corn is gonna run you almost a dollar a pound. So, I mean, there's your first uh, hint or your first clue on which one should you go with. Um, it, it all depends on what your tastes are and what, what you're willing to accept. Uh, they will both work. One just works a whole lot better than the other, that's all. Um, now, in saying that, I would offer to you this. This is George's, uh, solution for uh, grain selection. Remember we always talk about that three-legged stool? We talk about equipment, we talk about ingredients, we talk about process. And if you take one of those away, it falls over. Well, that's really the linchpin or the basis for this distilling craft. Um, you, if you upset one of those three legs, you have a tendency to produce a product that's not as 
appealing. Okay. Well, if you're using crack corn, you're 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 kind of, in my opinion, okay, just my opinion, you're kind of pulling one of them legs. You you may not be pulling it out completely, but you're you're pulling on it. Um, if I was to offer you, if I was to take this inside right now, and I was to make up a cornbread with this, or a cornbread with this. And I'll offer both of them to you. Which one would you eat? That's a rhetorical question. It means it doesn't require an answer. Just food for thought. Okay? Now, I hope that brings us to sort of like a close, because we're going to take this next door, of course, into the man cave, where we do all of our other stuff. And I'm going to show you how I do that. We'll take it step by step. And uh, we're going to run 10 pounds. That's 4.5 kilograms. And uh, we're going to use, uh, I've got two heaters over there going, and we're going to bring them up to 104, and we're going to run 10 pounds through that and hold it at about 20 minutes. And what, what did we call that? that? It was a rest, remember? You don't get it. Yeah, you do. This, it's before the protein rest. It's called doughing in. So we'll dough in at 104, and then we'll hold at the protein rest at 130, for 20 to 30 minutes, uh, and then we'll go to the sacrification rest, or at the point where we add our amylase and we allow that 60 to 90 minutes, and therefore everything should be converted. Then of course comes the sparging, better term is rinse. We're going to try to pull off the bottom and just dump it right back in the top and let it rinse all those grains out, and then use some extra water just to rinse the final grains out. So we'll do that, and then we should end up with a corn mash that's ready to ferment. Now, granted, if I use 10 pounds of flake corn in 10 gallons of water, you see, I'll lose a little bit of gravity points only because of there's a lot of other stuff in here that ain't going to ferment uh, as opposed to this. Wow. I hope we've kind of taken this much information and kind of crammed it into just a bite-sized piece that we can all understand. Now, do not ever, please, call me if you feel like it, but please do not ever ask me to do sweet feed. Won't do it. Won't touch it. Um, I'm just morally opposed to it. Sweet feed is feed for animals that has no malted grain in it whatsoever, so you get nothing out of that. And the only thing that ferments in sweet feed is the molasses pellets that are around the vitamins because that's the only way a horse will eat them. So uh, you, you'd be better off just running some cracked corn, throw some molasses in there. At least you get some starches out of here that you can convert uh, as opposed to sweet feed. Some people love it. Drive on. I'll be back shortly, and we'll be next door doing some mashing.